Thank you, David, and um, good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're based. Uh, I'm Dave Somerville, as David said, Chairman of the PRL Group, uh, recently changed name from CI Resources. If we can slide into the first slide, please. Uh, standard disclaimer, which uh, says everything we say is based upon knowledge that we currently have today. So about PRL Group, who are we? So we're an Australian listed uh, company. Uh, we mine phosphate on Christmas Island and we've been mining phosphate on Christmas Island for over 30 years. So first question, where is Christmas Island? So Christmas Island is in the northern Indian Ocean. It's about uh, 500 kilometres away from Jakarta, which makes it over 2,700 kilometres away from Perth and 1,700 kilometres away from the closest point uh, on the northwest shelf of Western Australia. Um, it's one of four islands which were claimed by the British and mining phosphate through that period of time. It's got a rich history and I'll come back to that in a moment. We're the mainstay of business and the economy on Christmas Island, which has a couple of thousand people as residents with the largest employer. Our marketing is conducted out of our office in Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur, um, and our finance and administration is in Perth. Through our logistics business, again, which I'll touch on shortly, we have offices in Singapore and Geneva, Switzerland. Some five years ago, uh, the board decided that we needed to diversify our interests and add to our value stream um, with a diversification into fertilisers. So that has now um, been implemented and we're seeing the results of that, particularly in this year. We've had a strong track record of returning value to shareholders through dividends and earnings per share and we have an entrepreneurial management group. If we slide into the next one. Uh, yours truly, about 10 kilos heavier and with a beard. Um, I've known the Christmas Island guys, the founder, Mr. Lai Hong, and his team for about 30 years. Uh, I was a consultant to them back in those days and have been chairman for the last 15. Um, Lai is the managing director and a founder of the company, uh, a part of the Union of Christmas Island Workers who fought to have the mine reopened in 1990. Uh, Lip Gen T is an executive director based in Malaysia with strong expertise in engineering and the markets in Malaysia and Indonesia. Mr Adrian Gagoni, executive director based in Perth, finance and corporate. Mr Rama Krishnan, Executive Director uh, Marketing in Malaysia, Dato Shri, uh, Non-Executive Director, uh, KS Ong, Non-Executive, and Jane T, also Non-Executive Director, with specialisations in plantations, uh, finance, and legal. Next slide, thank you. Our performance this year is the first year where we've seen the, the real uh, the flow-on effects from our diversification strategy, particularly in our logistics. And you can see the growth in logistics revenue from 2019, 20 and 21, none, 22 and then 23. And the right-hand graph showing where that growth in revenue has come from. That earnings growth, which is uh, in the bottom left-hand graph, is describing that with the earnings mix, um, logistics 57%, fertilisers 36% and the remainder. Um, the, the earnings that we have achieved, the, rev, the profit I should say that we have achieved this year is um, 25 million. And we've had a, a few years prior to that with the flow on effects of COVID and market conditions with profits 7 million and thereabouts. Then going back from 2018 backwards, we fairly consistently performed at about $20 million per year in net profit after tax. Uh, dividends, again, two to three years in the middle where we reduced dividends prudently to around three cents um, prior to that in the tens and this year back to 7.5 with a special dividend coming, uh, two special dividends of five cents each. 
capital structure, uh, 115 billion shares on issue. Next slide, please. The diversification has seen a broader spread of the group. Um, I'll go through these in a little more detail, but just from a, a high level. Energy, we provide fuel services on the island and to border patrol. Agribusiness, we have on island agribusiness as well as an interest in a plantation in Malaysia, which we've just divested. Uh, our fertiliser business, which of course in, includes mining, as well as our distribution and growth. Island development, we're certainly looking to expand that. Uh, tourism being a big uh, opportunity for us moving forward. And our logistics businesses, live and nutrients and chem oil. And again, I'll come back to those. Let me take the next slide, please. As I said, a rich history. Um, the Christmas Island was one of four islands which were taken by the British um, to, to mine phosphate and for 100 years that phosphate was mined and it was sent to predominantly Australia and New Zealand for farmers for the manufacture of superphosphate. Um, the labour that was, um, was in, in brought to the island because there was no Indigenous residents uh, were all um, Malaysian Chinese who were taken to the island for stints of two or three or more years um, as labour. Uh, and that continued through to po post the 1960s, when in 1958, uh, Australia took control of Christmas Island. In 1987, the phosphate price dropped and the cost of freight from the island to Australia uh, became prohibitive, so the mine was closed. The Union of Christmas Island Workers formed together with some investors, uh, won the right to reopen the mining lease and started remining some of the existing areas as well as um, some of the tailings and taking the second grade products and marketing them into Malaysia and Indonesia. Um, those, those second grade products have a higher water solubility, so uh, whereas in Australia, with superphosphate, as soon as it rains, you want the phosphate to go straight into the soil. Um, in a higher rainfall area, obviously, it acts as a natural slow-release fertiliser. Uh, and we continue to mine there today in exactly the same manner, as I said, 33 years down the track. Next slide, please. Our current mining activities, we're averaging uh, over uh, 500,000 tonnes of phosphate every year. Uh, we are the largest employer on the island, uh, employing uh, over 50% of the, the island in our workforce. Um, our, as I said, our group phosphate there is last year 558,000. Um, our revenue for phosphate, 125 mil, uh, and we have a maintained phosphate mining infrastructure. Over 16 million tonnes uh, has been exported to Malaysia, Indonesia, some in Australia and some in New Zealand since 1990. Next slide, please. There's, uh, there's a picture of the island. You can see the larger green area is National Park, which is 63% of the island. Um, there is vacant crown land, which is the dark coloured components or on the map you can see that as the sort of uh, aquary colour. Um, and those red areas are the areas where we have mining leases. The mining lease we have runs for a further 10 years, um, but there is more than sufficient resources to continue us way beyond that. We expect at least another 10 years beyond that. As you'll see, the mining areas that are quite dispersed across the island, there's over 30 of those areas, and we'll be mining any two or three at any one given time and matching the grades to our customers in our markets. Next slide, please. As I said, in the mid-2010s, um, we initiated a diversification strategy. Now, that a large part of that was downstream processing of our fertilisers and becoming involved in the logistics. Um, we have uh, energy business, which we, we also include uh, between energy and logistics. We have our own ship, so we're shipping our own product into Asia. Uh, as I said, we, we have a strong supporter of the island, the community and the broader stakeholders. Thank you. 
Of recent, we have engaged and acquired um, warehouses and, and leased some additional ones through mainland Malaysia, now into, um, into Borneo. In Bintulu, we're building a new... So effectively, we now have the capacity to hold stocks and to add value to those stocks and diversify our product offerings. Next slide. One of the new products that we're doing is in a um, controlled release or a slow release fertiliser. Um, there's quite a lot of those type of products in the markets today, but not for broad industrial application at a reasonable price point. Uh, we're conducting, we've done a lot of trials, we're now conducting field trials, and we're looking to grow that market moving forward. Thank you. Logistics, uh, Live and Nutrients is a fertiliser trading business, which we took a 60% share in. That's uh, based out of Singapore, um, which has been very strong um, um, income and revenue earner for us in the last two years, uh, outperformed last year in terms of profitability. And Chemoil, which is based out of Geneva, which has uh, interests and in um, logistics and trading in fertilisers and, and even more so now in refined oils in West Africa. Uh, next slide. Energy, as I said, we, we currently control the fuel supplies on Christmas Island, which obviously we need for our own products and for the drying, the burners, which dry the phosphate, as well as providing um, fuel to the Department of Defence and, and Border Patrol, which, which are very active on the island, as people would uh, remember, uh, had a detention centre there previously and where a lot of the illegal immigrants were heading towards. Um, that creates a strong profit for the company every year. Uh, next slide. Agribusiness, again, um, as I mentioned, we are looking at growing product on island, which has been very difficult to do. It's quite harsh conditions. Um, we, we've been um, expanding upon that with great success and providing back to the community as well. Next slide. Island development. We've just recently been uh, awarded the capacity to participate in the Northern Australian Infrastructure Facility which is a large funding uh, facility provided by the federal government for development into the northern regions. Um, by now being included in that northern regions, we're able to apply for finance and we want to invest back onto the island. Tourism is certainly a massive opportunity, but logistics are, are proving at this point in time there's not enough accommodation, there's not enough flights. So the mine is definitely going to become further engaged in that moving forward. Next slide. Sustainability, obviously a massive thing and certainly for mining companies and something that we're heavily involved in. I won't go through the details of that. Next slide. Looking ahead, certainly our expectation is that the logistics segment of our business is going to continue to be strong. Um, Fertilisers, as we know, are in increased demand with uh, population increase and, and food requirements. Um, we're continuing to expand given our current markets and the footprint that we have into Asia. And one more. Why invest in PRL Group? We have a, a proven track record uh, over 30 years of mining on the island, which will continue as well as the new opportunities and that diversification strategy. Um, the strong outlook for fertilisers and food in the world and strong cash-backed company. Uh, we've just sold a Malaysian subsidiary which has provided some further funding to enable us to build some further warehouses into Asia. And that's it from me. So thank you and welcome to ask any questions. Thanks, David. Great presentation and clearly a business that and a company that's been around for some time but has sat under the radar for a, a, an extensive period of time. And, and I would note this is probably one of the first times I've seen the company do an investor presentation in this form. So looking forward to seeing the growth of the company from a publicity and a, and a market point of view moving forward. A couple of questions have come through. Um, change in name. 
what what was the driver behind it um and and why the the change in name and why do you think that's important going forward oh look i think the change of the name is just reflective of the of the change in the business um previously known as ci resources uh, mining company but as you can see from the logistics and the fertilizer chain we're deriving more profit and more income um, from from that diversification and we see that that is certainly our pathway going forwards. So I think the name more accurately reflects who we are. Phosphate Resources Limited was the original mining company, so PRL uh, Global reflects that international bent that we now have. Now, you did touch on, you do have a, a strong track record of paying dividends. What are the prospects of the company continuing to pay dividends in the future? Um, I can assure you that um, our largest shareholders who are uh, on our, represented on our board are continually whipping me for more dividends. So um, the pressure is certainly on for us to do so. As we have been going through the growth phase, we had restricted dividends and uncertainty post-COVID and global markets, but we're now returning to the more normal situation where we expect dividends to be running in that sort of 6 to 8%. Um, and you did touch on the two special dividends along with the share buybacks associated with the recent divestment. Um, can you update us on the time frame of the dividends and buybacks? Yeah, so um, so just to, just to backtrack, we about 10 years ago we bought uh, a stake in a palm oil plantation um, in Malaysia, which enabled us to further integrate our activities into that market. Um, and to expand the, the product offerings that we had. That's been fulfilled, so we've now taken the opportunity to sell that, which will return capital of over 50 million Aussie. Um, we've allocated one third of that to be allocated for dividends, special dividend, and also um, for the share buyback. The first dividend is payable at the end of this month, and the uh, we receive the consideration over the over the next six months, so the second dividend will be in July, um, and the, the share buyback will be implemented post the 30th of June. Last question: Where to from here? The um, you know companies that are well funded with cash, cash flow operations, making money, um, are always being talked about as as M and A uh, participants. Um, is it organic growth? You've been successful in acquiring and building growth in other areas. Is it is it just keep doing what you're doing and building from there, or do you keep an eye out for what's what's available to uh, to add value to the company for its shareholders? Oh, look, both of both of those, David. Certainly, in terms of the growth path on fertilisers, that's something we're continuing to invest in, and we see uh, significant opportunities that are there. Um, the logistics business, we, that will continue to require more capital to grow, um, and that's been very successful for us. But we look at new opportunities at all times. We've looked at mines in Africa. We've looked at three now, three, two that we've done uh, a full due diligence on. We've looked at a couple of mine opportunities in Australia. So we're always looking for opportunities as we go forward, um, and, um, and, and we definitely have aspirations to continue to grow the company. Brilliant. Well, a great presentation, uh, a good overview of the company, uh, where it's come from and where it plans to go from here. So, David, thanks for your time. Thanks, David.